So I have to share this with you guys. Um, this is a really quick word. So this morning I woke up singing uh, Angel of Mine by Monica, right? And it's a beautiful song. She's singing about a man that came into her life, right? Very sweet song. But as I began to, I woke up and of course, I knew it had the name, the Lord's name written all over it because her song is not a song I listen to often, not Angel of Mine. It's not one of my like favorite songs of hers. So I don't listen to it very often. I may hear it if it comes on iHeartRadio or um, if it pops up on my YouTube music as I'm listening to R&B, but I woke up singing it. And I'm gonna read the lyrics to you guys, but when I started singing it, I started crying because to me, the song was like my love song to Jesus, right? And you'll understand more when I read quickly through the lyrics, but I would advise you guys who this is for to just listen to it and allow God to minister to you. Because if God is really on the forefront of your heart, there is no way you can listen to this song and not be moved to just give God glory and, and honor and thanks for just being an angel for us in our lives, for being our number one husband, whether you are a, a man or a woman, he says he is our first husband. Doesn't matter the gender, right? He's the bridegroom. Okay, he's the bridegroom. He's coming back for his brides. That's us. So as I'm listening to the song, I get emotional and I just begin to thank God because to me, again, the song was a love letter from my heart to the Lord Jesus. And the Lord just spoke so loudly through this song, like depending on by depending on him for who this word is for. Now you're those of you especially that's been waiting for uh, a love story, a marriage restoration to come together. Now, y'all know I'm not the one to always give marriage restoration and love words. God uses my divorce and my situation and my stance to minister. So that's a big part of my ministry. Um, but I don't just go around giving feel good words. But if you have been one of those persons, if you have been one of those people that have put God on the forefront of your heart, and this was never about a restoration, or even if you haven't been married, this was never about a new love. Like God is literally, you love him as he commands us to love him with all of your heart, with all of your soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, with all of your strength. He commands us to love him in that way. And if you have been one of those people, you have seen him work in your life. He has been an angel in our lives. He has just changed our lives. And again, I'm going to read this lyrics to you guys, but this is also pertaining to your love story. And because you put him first, because you put him first, because you waited on him, because you honored him and it wasn't about what you can get from him. He's sending an angel for you in your life to complete your love story. God does not have step. He does not have to do anything. And what he gives and blesses you with, it's free. It, it costs you nothing. The world, whatever the world and Satan gives to you as a blessing, whether it's monetary, a marriage, whatever, it costs you. And a lot of the time it costs you big. Sometimes it even costs your life. But the Lord tells us we can come to him, eat and drink without cost, right? Eat and drink without cost. He is the bread of life. We can't live on bread alone. We can't live on food alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, he is the bread of life. He is the water well that never runs dry. And for those of you that have honored him in that way, the type of love that he's bringing into your life, you will not be, be, um, you will not be put to shame. <laughs> you will not be put to shame. You will not be disappointed with the way this is about to play out for you. So I'm going to read these song lyrics to you guys. And then I'm going to tell you guys what happened on my way to the gym. I'm just getting back home from the gym. I just did a, a quick workout and some weights and headed back over and sat at my desk to, to get back to work. But I had an encounter on my way there as I'm listening to the song. I played it over and over and over this morning. And as I'm walking to the gym and just letting God minister to me, and I had an experience and God spoke through that. And it's also going to tie in with the word that I released this morning. Um, but the song Angel of Mine says, when I first saw you, I already knew there was something inside of you, something I thought that I would never find, Angel of Mine. 
that's exactly how a lot of us feels about the Lord Jesus. When we first saw him, like we already knew whatever situation in most of us, it took us to hit rock bottom to see him <laughs> and to call on him. But when we first saw him in whatever way, whatever led to us seeing him for who he is. And again, for most of us, we hit rock bottom. But when we first saw him, we already knew that there was something inside of him that we would never find because it could only come from God, right? And then it says, I looked at you looking at me. Now I know why they say the best things are free. I'm gonna love you, boy, you are so fine, angel of mine. Once God got our attention and we had that one-on-one -on -one intimacy with the Lord, like he opens doors, he opens doors in our lives, he opens our eyes, he opens our heart to see that everything we strive for, we can get from him and it's free, it does not cost us. Starting with eternal salvation, he's already paid the cost for us. So if he paid the cost for us for eternal salvation, you know he's going to pay the cost for anything else we need here on this earth. And we now realize that the best things in life, they're free because they come from our Lord Jesus. Nobody else can fill a void in our lives but Jesus, right? This song is so prophetic. How you changed my world, you'll never know. I'm different now. You helped me grow. You came into my life, sent from above. Jesus came into our lives. Who sent him? His father, God, to die for us. You came into my life, sent from above. When I lost all hope, you showed me love. I'm checking for you. Boy, you're right on time, angel of mine. God is always on time, guys. And for so many of you guys, you've been like, God, where is it? What's going on? Whatever he's doing in your life, he's an on-time God and he's doing it and he's doing it now. And whenever whatever else is supposed to roll out, it's gonna roll out. He's always on time. And one thing about this song, she repeats that part. I'm checking for you. Boy, you're right on time. He's always on time. Nothing means more to me than what we share. No one in this whole world can ever could, could ever compare. Last night, the way you moved is still on my mind. Angel of mine. What you mean to me, you'll never know. Deep inside, I need to show. You came into my life, sent from above. When I lost all hope, you showed me love. I'm checking for you, boy, you're right on time. Angel of mine. I never knew I could feel each moment as if they were new. I never knew I could feel each moment as if they were new. He's doing a new thing, okay? When you, when you connect with God intimately, he does a new thing. The old things have passed away. He's doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Um, where am I? I? I never knew I could feel each moment as if it were new. Every breath that I take, the love that we make, I only share it with you. When I first saw you, I already knew there was something inside of you, something I thought that I would never find, angel of mine. Guys, you can't tell me that is not prophetic. You cannot tell me that if that does not hit you intimately and not about a man, but about the man, capital T, capital M, as in God, I don't know what to tell you. Because I literally was crying. That's why I tell you guys, a worship song doesn't necessarily mean it's a gospel song. There's a lot of gospel artists and Jesus is not operating behind them. It's not about... Let me not even go there. If this song doesn't hit you intimately when it comes to the Lord God and God sending his son Jesus to die for us and just everything he's allowed us to go through to grow us and us being able to really see who God truly is. But it took many of us, again, hitting rock bottom. A lot of testimonies you hear, the first thing <laughs> the person says is, man, when I was down, and just at my lowest, God showed up in my life. A lot of us meet Jesus at the lowest points in our lives. Unfortunately, not it's not unfortunate, but that that is how a lot of us meet him. We don't meet him when we're at the our highs of highs. A lot of us really get to know him because he knocks us down to size and we need it. 
And because whoever this is for that put him on the forefront, watch what God is about to do. Every moment you're going to experience is going to feel like new because God does not disappoint. Our Lord Jesus does not disappoint with what he's about to do. And as I'm walking to the gym, I'm listening to the song and I'm letting it minister to me. And I see this lady walking with her husband, big and pregnant. And the Lord said, ask her when she's due. And I looked at her and I was just like speaking to the Lord silently. And I'm like, I don't know her, Lord. I'm like, normally I don't have a problem talking to strangers, but I'm like, if it's meant for me to ask her when she's due, show me a sign. Right. I'm like, show me a sign that this is what I'm hearing. And this is something I said to him in my heart. Right. And when I looked at her, she just put on this smile and I knew she was going to say hello and speak to me. And that was my sign from the Lord. So when she smiled at me, I said, hi, I said, wow. I said, how many months are you? And she said, this is my last uh, trimester. She said, I'm in the last stage. Y'all better catch it. She said, I'm in the last stage. I said, wow, when are you due? She said, January the 13th, one, one, three, right? January the 13th. I said, is this your first child? And she said, yeah. I said, what is it? She said, a boy. She said, I wanted a girl, but my husband wanted a boy. Um, she said, so we're having a boy. And I said, congratulations. I said, you look so beautiful, pregnant. And I went on my merry way. Guys, when I got back home, um, the Lord had me look up 113 in the Strong's Concordance, guys. And this is all biblical. 113 in the Strong's Concordance, the Hebrew Concordance, uh, means Adon, A-D-O-N. It's actually pronounced Adon, all done. Like almost like all done, but it's it's pronounced as if it's um, written as A-W-D-O-N-E, like all done, right? And it means Lord. And the very first time this word is used in scripture is in Genesis chapter 18 by Sarah. And it's right as the Lord Jesus is speaking to Abraham and telling him that Sarah is going to bear a child. <laughs> the promise, okay? That, and I just released the word this morning. This is how strategic God is. The, the word means Lord. It also means husband's. Right. And back during biblical times, the wives would refer to their husbands as my Lord. Right. Lowercase L. So this word is used the first time in Genesis chapter eight, verse 12. And again, this is when the Lord Jesus is speaking to Abraham, telling him Sarah is going to bear a child. And Sarah responds. It says, so Sarah laughed to herself as she thought after I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? She was like saying, after I'm old and Abraham is too, now I'm going to bear a child. But she referred to him as her Lord. That is the very first time this word all done is in um, scripture. As when the Lord Jesus is telling her, giving her a promise. He's implanting that promise in her of Isaac, the promise. I literally just released the word on this this morning. God is strategic, guys. That lady said, I'm due January 13th. The Lord literally brought me right here. I can't make this up. And after this, this is when the Lord Jesus is like, why did she laugh? And Sarah's like, I didn't laugh as if like the Lord Jesus knew you laughed. But he did what he said he would do. It didn't happen right then and there. It took years for it to happen. But he did what he said he would do. His word will never return to him void. Guys, God is so strategic. I can't make this stuff up. I cannot make this stuff up. But I had to release this word to you guys. He's doing exactly what he said he would do. He's doing exactly what he said he would do. And he says in, hold on, I always lose this verse. Isaiah 66, 9, shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery, says the Lord. He does not bring you to the birthing stage, take you through all the, the trimesters and not deliver. And another thing he put on my heart 
as I was working out, he says it's a time of rest for many of you. Just like after a mother gives birth, she doesn't go right back to work. She's on maternity leave. It's her time to rest and to steward her, her gift, to steward what she's birthed, to, to get to know it, to care for it, to embrace it. For many of you guys, this is a time of rest. You're giving birth and you are going into a rest, a season of rest. Just like a mother, after she gives birth, she does not go back to work. She's able to steward and care for her gift, for her blessing, for her birthing. So somebody needs to hear this, y'all. This is not a part of the 40 Days of Love series, but y'all know the Lord will have me jump on and give some extra words here and there sometimes. This is one of those times. I love you guys. I pray this blesses you. I, I love the Lord so, so much. And yeah, guys, we'll talk soon. Bye.